Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Eclectic Knitter podcast. My name, of course, is Raylene, aka Kamana Knits on Ravelry and Instagram. If you are a returning viewer to the show, thank you so much for joining. And uh, if you are new, then thank you so much for joining. <laughs> and I do hope that you watch again. Um, it's been almost three months since my last podcast, and I've decided to um, update a little bit, and this is going to be season two, um, episode one, reboot a little bit. Um, as you can tell, I'm in a new place. Um, I'm not going to be able to show all of the objects that I finished in the last three months, simply because some of them I don't have anymore, and I moved recently, so some of them are, I don't know where, in boxes somewhere. Rubbermaids, probably. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, I'm recording at 6.10 p.m. It is dark outside, so this is what I can do with the indoor lighting. Um, so the light from the kitchen, and then my lamp is over there. Uh, I know I look a little ghosty, and there's a lot of shadows. Um, but it is what it is. Hopefully the colors will work out, and uh, this will work. So there goes nothing. Um, I do have some finished objects to show, and then I have some works in progress, and yeah. So, let's get started with finished objects. The first thing that I finished, this is not in order of actually finishing, the first thing that I have grabbed that I finished, um, I knit a pair of socks. This is out of um, Knitterly Things Vesper Sock Thick. This is her 7525 um, wool nylon blend um, that I really like. I get all of her. Um, every time I buy her yarn, it's always in this base. I'm part of her Rainbow Club this year. This was July or August or June. This is OMG Pastels! And it's got these cool speckles. So it's just like there's the gray stripe right there. And then it looks like she just speckled all of the other colors with that gray. Um, so these have an afterthought heel. They have not been worn yet. One is a little bit longer, I feel, than the other. That's okay. These are for me. I did I did a decent job at matching up the heel on this one. I didn't even try on this one. <laughs> I'm just not just don't always care enough about the little details like matching colors. They're going to be on my feet. I'm going to be the only one who knows that the heel does not match. I do not give a flying, you know what? <laughs> if my heels don't carry on the same color sequence. I don't even care if the two socks like start at a different point in the stripe sequence. These ones matched up like perfectly because when I finished the heel of the first one, it was a little bit of blue, so I was able then to... Or I don't know. I don't know, but they matched. Somehow. Magically. The actual stripe sequence on the socks matches. The heels, not so much. Not so much caring. Um, the second finish object is also a pair of socks! Yay! <laughs> Um, these are out of Long Dog Yarns in the, the main color is Hemingway. And then I did contrasting heels and toes in a mini skein that I got also from her. This is her sock base. It's a two-ply superwash merino nylon. And it's just, it's gorgeous. I feel, I have my monitor on really dim so that my glasses don't get a lot of glare from it. Otherwise, I feel like you can't see my eyes because all you can see is my computer screen reflected in my glasses. Um, my instinct is that the camera is blowing this out and making it seem a lot paler than it actually is. Um, the orangey bits are really rather pumpkin-y, and then the tealy bits match mostly. They're a little bit bluer than the actual mini that I chose, but it was the closest match I could get with what I had in stash, and I matched these up a while ago. This has a fish lips kiss heel and then just a regular toe. I haven't worn these yet either, because I've been waiting to share them with you guys. Aren't you lucky? So those are done. 
And then I have another finished object. This one's rather large, which you never even saw in programs. Um, Tannis Lowley from Tannis, the dyer behind the wonderful Tannis Fiber Arts, which I adore. They're Canadian. They're out of uh, Montreal or out of Quebec. She recently, in September, um, asked for test knitters for her seaboard um, sweater, which was a sweater that I had seen on her social media off and on. It well, She did hers in like natural and then like a really dark navy blue, kind of like a sea navy kind of reference, blue and white stripes. Um, I happened to have some of her yarn um, in the dove gray and rose gray colors in her DK weight, which is what it's knit in. So I volunteered for the test. And I wasn't originally planning on using these two colors together, um, but I am so glad I did. So this is her seaboard sweater. It's an oversized boxy sweater with this lace, alternating lace and stockinette stripes. It has a boat neck, so you literally knit two squares and then do a three needle bind off at the top. So this is your neck opening. So there's no sleeve shaping. There's no um, yoke shaping. And then on the edge of each square is these beautiful cables. So the sides. And then it has a split hem because you only seam like part of the way. And then you pick up and knit the sleeves, and they have shorter stripes. And I love it. Now, the ribbing is all one by one twisted rib, which on the body you're knitting flat. So you're purling through the back loop. And it kind of sucked the life out of me. Because you do like 20 rows down here. And they're like seven rows up here. On the sleeves, it's not too bad because you're just going around in circles. So this has about three quarter, I think these are actually perfect regular length sleeves for me. I actually really love how these colors work out because this dove gray has some of that, a pinky shade in it that kind of goes with the rose gray. And I love it so much. I have no idea. I want to knit more of these. I want to knit one for my mom. I want to knit one for my sister-in-law. I want to knit one for myself, another one. I, I love it. It's not as oversized on me as it probably should be. Um, I knit the 67 inch size. That's what I test knit. Um, I probably should have, she does have one larger size, which is a 71. It's supposed to have like 12 inches of positive ease or something. Mine has like eight, um, which on a bigger, person isn't as much positive ease as it should have um but i don't care it fits nicely it does look a little bit oversized not as oversized as it does on smaller people um but that is okay this was knit in a month i was a little bit late for the test but she still released it on time and whatever i felt bad but i got really sick and lost my knitting mojo so yeah, I would highly recommend, um, I did not use nearly as much yarn as what she estimated for this size. She estimated four skeins of each color. I used two and three quarter of the gray, which I used as the main color, because that's what I did my ribbing in. And then I used two and a half skeins of the rose gray. So or I started off with four skeins of Dove and three of Rose Gray, and I was concerned about running out, but I actually had almost close to a full skein. I did break into it, but I had close to a full skein of Rose Gray left, so maybe two and a quarter skein. And this was her um, Tannis Fiber Arts Pure Wash Merino DK weight, um, which is like a non-chemical super wash base, more natural, more something. Um, and I really enjoyed knitting with it. I really enjoy her colors. I really enjoy her yarn bases. Um, so yeah, I would really suggest if you want kind of a boxy style that is slightly more interest than just a boxy because it has this lace. The lace was really enjoyable. And by the time I got done 
you know, the repeats, then I got just got to do some nice easy stockinette for a while, and by the time I got bored of curling back, then I got to do some more lace. And I actually really, really love this lace. She calls it a punchwork lace. Love it. So nice. Um, so yeah, that is probably one of my favorite sweaters, and my screen just died, so now I can't see myself. Um, I guess I should move my mouse. <laughs> um, the next finish object, that's all the knitting finish objects that I have to show. Um, the next object that I have is a spinning finish object, though. Um, this is a skein of spinning that I did. This was a three-ply. This was Into the World um, BFL Nylon. This was her January 2018 Club Colorway um, in Castrovel Lily, I think it was. This was a chain ply. I'm hoping it'll stripe. I'm hoping this will be socks. Like, really hoping it'll be socks. Most, it's fairly not consistent. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I really love it. It's probably the thinnest three-ply that I've done to date overall. And I put in quite a bit of twist. Like before I washed it, it would not lay like this. But after I washed it and went like this a couple times and then let it dry, it uh, evened out. Quite a bit. You can see I've got some whirly gigs here where there's a little bit too much twist. But that's okay. You live and you learn, or you spin and you learn, right? So this is going to be socks at some point. It, tells, it smells like my, the ukulele that I use, which is the Rapture. It's the jasmine color, or scent, and I love it. So nice. Um, I'm not very good at skating also, by the way. So, uh, yeah, I'm really happy with this. I finished it a while ago, well, not too long ago. I washed it and thwacked it in the bathroom here, and I've only been living here a week, but I've had the keys for two weeks. So I finished spinning it about a week and a half ago, two weeks ago. I do not spin every day, um, but I spin a couple times a week. I My wheel is just over there. Um, and right now, because I'm talking about spinning, this is going to be a whip. Um, that's all my finished objects that I have. So the next thing, this is my spinning work in progress. I'm working on some Hedgehog Fibers um, Superwash Merino Nylon. It's an 85-15 blend. It doesn't have a colorway name on it. It's just gray. Here, I can actually grab. Ah, that was a little bit more reaching than I wanted. So it's just this gray with these pops, speckles. It's like a speckled fiber. And I know it won't look speckled once it's spun up, but that's okay. Is this the actual? Yeah, so I bought this from a local yarn store, uh, Wolfly Wool. It doesn't have a colorway name on it. It is, oh, it's 70% merino, 30% nylon. I was wrong. 125 grams, so just over four ounces, slightly over four ounces. Four ounces is 115 grams. Um, so I'm spinning this as a two-ply, and it's going to be for socks, because everything I spin is planned for socks. So I'm done the first half. Oh, these cameras. Okay. I'm done the first half of it. Um, it's turned out fairly fine, I think. It has, yeah, it does look very purpley. There's some orangey bits too. See some orange up there, like over here. But yeah, I'm done the first half. I started the second. Um, I'm really enjoying spinning it. It'll be interesting to do it as a two-ply. I think it'll be really thin. Um, 
I'm finally working, like I have a, um, my wheel is a Ashford Kiwi 2 that I ordered, and um, it has a lace weight flyer that you can purchase, uh, which comes with a separate um, band and then a smaller whirl to get, I think the highest you can go is 14 to 1 or something. Um, so I have been using that for a little while for the last couple things that I spun. Um, and I'm now using it on the highest setting, so I'm finding that I am getting a nice thinner um, three ply. It's not maybe as thin as it should be, so my skeins are still probably on a heavy fingering light sport weight side. Uh, what I really need to do, like I haven't, um, my Castro Lily, I haven't um, used my whips, my wraps per inch tool at all, so I maybe should. That would probably give me a little bit of a better idea. Another idea is to compare it um, to some commercial um, yarn thicknesses, because I think that I always think it's thinner than it is, which I've heard is a common problem with hand spun, but oh well. So the next thing, now we're on to knitting the whips. Ta-da! Um, I am knitting socks for my niece. These are tube socks that are that OMG pastels. The first one is done. The second one is about half done. I knit these during my lunch break at work, so they stay in my purse. This is how much yarn I have left. We should be able to get it done with that. So those are going well. Two by two rib for forever. Um, because it is a thicker, I guess I should talk about this yarn a little bit more. So this is, like I said before, this is the thick sock. It's a 75 um, superwash wool and it's 25 nylon. Um, it feels like an opal or a regia, i.e. it's not as soft as a merino nylon would be. Um, it is very hard wearing. I have no wear on the pairs that I have of this. Um, and I really love knitting it. Now because it is a little bit more hefty, um, for me, I usually knit a 64 stitch sock on a US 0 or 1. These I knit on 1.5s and I do, I think I do 64 stitches on, no, 56 on 1.5s and I get a really dense sock. So for my niece, I do 48 stitches on a 1.5. And I've gone, I was doing all my socks on ones, but as I'm wearing some of the newer pairs that I've knit on ones, I found that my gauge has loosened. Um, so I've gone back down to zeros for my sock knitting, which I wasn't, like I, like I said, I was doing everything on a one. I've gone back down to a zero, which I'll show you. Um, this pair specifically is when I started. Um, so this is this, another whip. This is Nomadic Yarns, Such Great Heights colorway on her BFL sock. Um, Brit sock is what she calls it. Um, so I have one sock done and I am a good portion of the next sock. This is it in the fall. I like her bullseye balls or her lollipop gobstopper balls. Um, I was finding when I was wearing this base specifically, knit out of ones recently, US ones, that they were just too loose out of 64 stitches. So I have gone back down to zeros for these in the hopes that it works a little bit better. Um, now I will be doing afterthought heels on these and I will probably have to knit more than five rounds on my afterthought heel before I start the decreases because I do have a fairly deep instep. Um, and that's where I find that it stretches the most. But I would rather like have the rest of the sock. If I knit them on ones, I need to decrease my stitch count and I'd rather keep the same stitch count and just knit them a little bit tighter so that they wear a little bit better. Yeah, I love this. I am so enamored with this. I love the gray, and I love the peachy pink, and I love the little rusty red. Um, so yeah, Nomadic Yarns is awesome. Really awesome. 
The next whip that I have for you is something that you have seen before that I am still working on because um, I basically stopped working on it to do that test knit. Um, so this is my soiree sweater. This is in Hedgehog Fibers, her sock and um, kilt silk lace in skinny dip color, I believe. So it's this beautiful minty green. Um, the unicorn poop uh, progress marker is where I was the last time I showed this, so I have made good progress. I have done just over 5 inches of body, and you're supposed to do 11 inches for my size. And then you split off. So it is like a cropped sweater, a looser fit, positive ease cropped sweater. Um, and it has these gorgeous cable paddles going up the sides, a little one by one cables, and then these bigger four by four cables. Otherwise, it's just stockinette, and you hold the yarns double, so it is fuzzy and fluffy, and will probably be way too warm for most of the year for me. Probably won't have to uh, wear a jacket when I wear this. Um, so I'm hoping this is not a neutral color, obviously. This is a bright scream at me color. So I'm hoping to wear this with probably leggings, because all my leggings are high rise, and then like a long sleeve gray t-shirt underneath. Um, or I was kind of hoping that I'd be able to wear it over dresses, but I don't know if I have any dresses that this color will go with. So I may end up knitting another one of these in like a gray, but then I have to buy more mohair. And mohair's kind of expensive. These kids silk, like the mohair silk lace weights, they're kind of expensive, especially if you want like indie dyed. I have some long dog yarns mohair silk lace. I bought Coral Crush, like five skeins of it. Um, and she didn't have any of her Coral Crush in sock yarn. So I was going to knit another, not one of these, but I was going to knit maybe the no frill sweater or do a like a flax light, use those numbers, because the no frill sweater doesn't go up to my size. But I was thinking, if I adjusted the gauge, like I like this gauge. So if I figured out what this gauge was, and adjusted those numbers for flax light numbers, then I could knit myself a mohair raglan sweater. Right? So... I'm getting more comfortable with doing that because it's worked out. It has worked out. Um, anyway, so this is getting more love now that I've finished my test knit and it will continue to get love because I do enjoy it. I do like it. And I do want the finished object. So that's hopefully going to be the next sweater that I finish. I have more sweaters that I really want to knit. Um, maybe another color work sweater. We'll see. Um, and then, last but not least, I have put some more work in on my um, my granny stripe blanket, which I will show because it's been a while since I've shown this because it's been a really long while since I've worked on it. Um, but it's huge. So. For the granny striped crochet blanket, I made myself like a magic cake shawl with minis so that I can just crochet and crochet and crochet, and it's almost kind of at the end, so it's looking a little smooshy, and I hand wound it so it's not like fancy. Um, anyway, because, what was I saying? You're originally, I think, supposed to cast on maybe 300 stitches get like a lap size blanket or not even cast on chain on I don't know basically mine is wide enough that it's gonna fit a king size bed so that is what my mom and I measured it out at I have worked probably from here up I am obviously not caring if a color goes across an entire row. I'm using self-striping so the color changes regularly. I am not doing any kind of color management really. I'm just crocheting. So this thing will be huge. 
and I'm okay with that. Um, once this magic cake, <laughs> once this cake is gone, I will make myself another one and keep going. It's actually just sitting in a basket here beside me. So I have all my mini skeins in an actual bag. And then I have the magic cake with the project just sitting in the, in the bin because it's really too big to fit in that bag. It's going to be huge when it's done because it'll, I wanted it to fit my queen size bed and then I guess I just cast on to, like I haven't done a lot of granny stripe stuff. Oh, this is my first granny stripe blanket. So um, I really wasn't sure because I knew I wanted to make it bigger than probably any of the ones that I had seen before. Um, cause like Amy from Stranded finished one, but she has like a single bed. Um, and everyone else, yeah, they cast on more than the original pattern, but nobody, I cast on, I chained on almost 600. So, um, it's definitely like over 80 inches wide and I, it hasn't been washed or anything. I don't even know if I will. Like I can, you can see I have my granny square, um, blanket that I crocheted behind me. I haven't even washed or blocked it and it's like, I don't think I will until it gets dirty but I haven't really been using it it's just been sitting there and keeping my back warm so um, yeah otherwise um, I'll talk about I recently finished a book called Johnny Appleseed I do not remember who it's by um, it's by a young trans man trans woman it's an indigenous writer from the Peguasi um, Reserve in northern Manitoba. Um, so it centers around Winnipeg and um, talks a lot about gay, growing up gay in a reserve. Um, they talk about the traditional like two-spirit and he talks a lot about his grandma. And it's, it's fiction, but I feel like it probably reflects real life so it's really good I really enjoyed it um, the next book I was reading was white by her but I think that expired I've been checking books out of the library and I think that one expired so I don't know if I'm gonna read that one next um, but I have books on my bookshelf that I need to read but I can read at any time with no time deadlines so um, lately it's just been a lot of unpacking settling myself again um, it's been really nice to be able to knit and um, sleep and not be interrupted and um, tomorrow I am going to get Cyrus my dog so that'll be I'm, I'm maybe more nervous about that than I thought I would um, but it'll be fine all right I hope you guys are enjoying what you're knitting and uh, I will talk to you soon bye